Rallying entered the 70s with a bang. The FIA, which stands for the Fédération Internationale de l'Automobile, or the International Automobile Federation in English, made the decision to create the International Championship for Manufacturers, abbreviated as the ICM. This was, as the name implies, a championship consisting of a series of rallies raced across the year, culminating in a manufacturer being crowned the champion. This would be the forerunner to the WRC, which would follow a few years later. In 1970, the inaugural year, the championship was raced across seven different rallies, all but one within Europe. The championship was won by Bjorn Waldegard piloting his trusty Porsche 911 S after winning the Monte Carlo Rally, the Swedish Rally and the Austrian Alpine Rally and the Porsche team finished with a two point lead over Alpine Renault. So in 1971, Alpine swung back by running away with the title with an 18 point lead over Saab in second. Their new car, the Alpine Renault A110-1600 was an upgraded version of the car they found success with in the 1960s. 60s. The 1.6 litre inline 4 from the Renault 16 TS made 125 horsepower, being a huge step up from the previous iteration. The A110 was making a huge name for itself, and in 1971, while being piloted by Ove Anderson, won the Monte Carlo, San Remo, Austrian Alpine, and Acropolis rallies, as well as a fifth victory at the final ever Coupe des Alpes, piloted by Bernard Darniche. So, in retaliation, Lancia swung back even harder in the 1972 championship with a 42 point lead over Fiat in second and won two whole rounds in advance. Lancia, like Alpine, had become a huge name in rally by now. Their Lancia Fulvia HF had won every single round of the Italian rally championship every single year from 1965 to 1973 with the exception of 1970 when Fiat took it. Even with the car aging relatively quickly compared to its peers, it still had fire left in it, but Lancia knew that they would eventually have to build a follow-up to remain competitive. Elsewhere, the early 70s saw the birth of many new rally cars. Ford followed up their successful Cortina models from the 60s with the brand new Ford Escort RS 1600, based on the first generation Ford Escort, fitted now with a 1.6 litre 16 valve engine making 115 horsepower, also being modified with stiffer body shells and sport suspension. The RS 1600 was the first of Ford's racers to be named with the RS subtitle, establishing a legacy that would last for decades. Fiat truly joined the race in 1972 with their Fiat Abarth 124 Rally. The 1.8 litre inline 4 made 126 horsepower and the car secured itself as a threat almost immediately with a victory in the European Rally Championship. The Japanese began to show an interest too. Datsun introduced their 240Z and won the 1973 Safari Rally and Mitsubishi launched the 1600 GSR, a rally spec version of the Lancer and won the Southern Cross Rally every year from 1973 until 1977 and also saw success at the Safari Rally in 1974 and 1976. 1973 brought about the biggest change yet. The FIA introduced the World Rally Championship, an evolution to the ICM. It was largely the same. Scoring was now awarded based on the highest position a manufacturer placed in a race. So, for example, if Ford was to place 3rd, 5th and ninth on a single rally, they'd only be awarded points for their 3rd place finish, the other two results would be disregarded. These other two places, however, would then also be denied to any other manufacturers. The WRC was part of a larger scheme from the FIA a way to better understand what cars would fit into what category for all types of motorsports like sports car racing, touring class racing and yes, rally. There were six categories in all, but the only two that were of real concern for rally sport was Group 2 and Group 4. The main requirement to be homologated into either category was a minimum number of cars built for the road. Group 2 was 1,000 per year and Group 4 was 500 per year, which was later lowered to 400. Most cars entered for rally were entered into Group 4, largely due to the smaller amount of cars required. There were also now 13 events on the calendar and a lot of these rallies were brought over from the ICM, most of which became staples of the WRC. 
There was a heavy abundance of purely gravel stages, but there were also some snow and tarmac stages, as well as a mixture of surfaces on many of the stages too. The championship was a huge success, and it was easily won in the inaugural year with a huge lead from Alpine Renault, returning with their A110 after winning the 1971 ICM. Alpine were truly at the top of their game at this point, but subsequently lost their lead to the Italians over the succeeding years. This began in 1974, Lancia had come back once again. The Stratos following the Mini in the early 60s was the next big revolution in rally engineering. You see, every single car up to this point had been a modified version of an already road going vehicle. Lancia's own Fulvia was one such car. However, the Italian team decided to try something a little bit radical, a car built from the ground up to compete in rally which they would then sell to the public for the road in order to be homologated. Basically, Lancia had swapped the method around. Instead of road, then race, it was now race, then road. The Bertone designed Stratos took full advantage of this setup. It was powered by a mid-mounted V6 ripped straight out of the Ferrari Dino, which came about as Fiat owned both Lancia and Ferrari at the time. It made 188 brake horsepower in road trim or Stradale form, but that was up to 275 horsepower in rally trim. It also featured a radical wraparound windscreen for maximum forward visibility and of course had that iconic wedge shape. And just as many predicted, and as Lancia hoped, the Stratos effectively conquered the WRC by the hands of the likes of Sandro Minari and Marco Allen. It won the 1974 season, now run on just 8 rallies, many cancelled due to the oil crisis. Still, Lancia took this opportunity to build a sizeable lead over their rivals, Fiat, who were still stuck in second. The world of rally was really beginning to hot up. Now that there was a consistent championship in place, manufacturers now had an even battleground to duke it out. More and more money and manpower was being poured into the sport and it was getting ever more popular by the year. Join me in episode 5 where Italy's dominance of the 1970s continues and one rule change late in the decade would change rallying forever.